What's going on, guys? Matt Wyke, Wyke Fitness. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Today, what I want to do is I want to talk about your body mass index, BMI. It's basically a chart or a graph that a lot of doctors and healthcare you know, professionals are using to figure out exactly how healthy you are. So you have you know, underweight, you have a normal weight, you have overweight, and then you have obese. Now, I have some of these calculators up on my website. If you go to wakefitness.com and you click on um, the free content, the little drop down will tell you fitness calculators. If you click on there, it'll take you to a page that has BMI calculator, which is your body mass index, which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Your ideal body weight calculator, if you wanted to figure that out. A way for you to calculate your body fat. Now, let me preface this by saying these calculators aren't absolute. So it's not like you're going to put your information in and what it gives you is going to be spot on where you are. It's really going to put you in the ballpark of, of you know, the average of where you are. Uh, another calculator is your fat-free mass that I have on there. I have a calculator that allows you to figure out how many calories you should be consuming. And again, you know, you're putting in your, your information your, and the goals that you're trying to achieve, and it'll give you a roundabout number. Uh, and all of this is for free. So feel free to use this to your advantage to, to at least get started somewhere uh, where you're not coming out of pocket for, for anything. And the last one I have is a calculator that will tell you how many calories you've burned. So the drop down in that one will have a whole bunch of different activities. You choose the one that you've done or are going to do and for how long. And it will tell you exactly. Uh, well, not, I shouldn't say exactly. Again, it will give you a ballpark number of how many calories you're going to burn. But if you click on the BMI calculator on the website, it's going to pop open a new screen. And it's going to ask you to put in some certain information. Um, the easiest thing for you to do is, I mean, you can even do this as you're listening. Um, basically, it gives you some background as to, you know, what BMI is. And then the calculator itself, it's, it's super simple. You put in your height in inches. You can also change the, uh, uh, the measurement to centimeters if you decide to do it that way. And then you also put in your weight in pounds or you can do it in kilograms. You click calculate uh, and then it will give you a number. That number uh, you can plug in on the chart that I provided and it'll tell you exactly you know where you should be. So let's just use me for example. So, all right, so we have six, nine inches, um, 190. Let's calculate. So this is calculating. I put in my height, inches would be 69 inches. My weight is 190 pounds. It fluctuates, you know, 190, 200 pounds. Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm no means fat. So BMI 28.1. Now, if I check on the chart, all right, so 5'9". And I am, it said 28.1. So, so according to this, now again, the way that it's laid out is underweight, a normal or healthy weight, overweight, obese, and then they actually have extremely obese, um, but that's more for really short individuals, uh, you know, shorter stature, um, most of this I would even consider the obese category in, in the morbidly obese. But looking at my number, 28.1, I'm in what's called the yellow, which I'm on the upper end, according to this, of being overweight. In fact, I'm two places away from being in the obese category. Now, when I was a little heavier, I was 205. So let me put that in for example. So I was 205. Let's calculate that again. So that BMI ends up being 30.3. 30 
So again, if I look on the scale, I go to 30. Now I'm in the obese. So, I mean, I leaned out a little bit, but as you can tell, the BMI calculator isn't exactly a correct representation of where you are from a health standpoint, from a weight standpoint, because the downside of BMI is that it's only looking at your height and your weight. So let's use a bodybuilder, for instance. Um... You know what, let's just use one of the uh, 212 competitor. If you follow bodybuilding, 212 is the smallest men's open type of division where you can compete. You have a 212 division, which is any bodybuilder that weighs 212 or less. The open is, you know, anybody can, can go in. But generally, the open is more geared towards uh, just the mass monsters, the guys that are 250 plus at 3% body fat. Um, you know, just for fun, let's use open. Let's just use open. So let's just say there's a, a guy who's 250 on stage and, and he's, uh, oops, let me change that. Um, so 250 on stage and bodybuilders are generally shorter. So let's just say he's five, four. So 64, let's calculate this. <laughs> Okay, so a bodybuilder who is 5'4", five, 5'4", four, five four inches, okay, 250 pounds, granted, they're at 3% body fat, okay, their BMI score is 42.9. Whether whether you use 42 or 43 by, by rounding up, somebody who's 5'4", they're not even on the charts, okay? Uh, it, this chart ends at, at least for, for the five, four category that we're looking at for the example, it ends at 37. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you're already past that. Uh, you would be considered morbidly obese at that weight. But obviously if you look at the guys that are on stage, they're, they're not fat. <laughs> In fact, they're far from being fat. Uh, 3% body fat. <laughs> you're basically holding on to nothing. It's really your your organs at that point. Uh, so I want you to look at some of these calculators with a grain of salt. Are they convenient? Absolutely. Are they absolute? No, N not even close. But if, if you're a, I hate to use the term normal because when I look at my industry and fitness professionals and bodybuilders were not normal. If you line up a group of bodybuilders or those who are, uh, you know, fitness models and you put down next to them a normal population, it's drastically different. So, you know, the, the fitness minded individuals and the bodybuilders are going to tend to have more muscle mass than say the normal population. So their BMI is gonna to be totally messed up. Now here's the downside of this. And and I wrote an article, and at the time of, of releasing this podcast, I'm not sure if it's going to be up or not. Uh, it depends how quickly the site that I gave it to is going to publish it. When you go to get life insurance, they will check your BMI. And that score is what they tend to rank in terms of how so-called healthy you are. I will use myself as an example. At the time of looking for life insurance, I gave them my height, I gave them my weight because they just wanted to give me a quote of about what it would be. And then if I said, yeah, I, I want to move forward, that's when they would actually, you know, come out and they would weigh me, check my height, get my BMI, and then the quote would actually be really what it is. Uh, and at that time, I was 205. So like I mentioned you know, earlier in the example, I was technically obese, which means my payments towards life insurance are, are at a premium. I mean, they're, they're through the roof 
right? So when they sent the quote, I said, you know, hey, with all due respect, I, I'm not sure I understand why I'm paying more. I mean, if you send the person out, they're going to see me. They're going to see, you know, a, a gym that I have at my house with, you know, equipment and dumbbells. I mean, you're looking at 40 plus thousand dollars of an investment in a gym, which I use every day. And you're going to make me pay more and penalize me because of my muscle mass compared to my height. And, and literally they apologized and said, that's, that's how we do it. And so I, I just didn't agree with it. So I continued to look for different quotes, but the gist that I want to talk to you about today is I, I want you to look at your own situation. Where are you currently? Are you happy with your weight? If not, obviously then you know that you need to make a change. So that's either you, you move more, you exercise, or you start cleaning up your nutrition. Th those are the only two things, really. Move more, clean up your diet, okay? If you combine them, your results will be even better. But if you want to take small steps, you know, start with one thing and slowly progress to, to different things. Your BMI, your body mass index, for a normal population will be very close to where you need to be. If you're not exercising regularly, you're not holding on to a whole bunch of lean muscle mass, a bunch of lean muscle tissue, it's going to be pretty dang close. So, you know, if, if I were to use my example that had me, what was I, 5'9", I was at 28. So, you know, I, I'm almost to the obese category if, if I didn't have muscle mass and a lot of my mass would end up being fat, body fat. That would be a good representation that, hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm overweight. I need to lose weight. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I could still lose weight, and I, and I should. Um, but according to this, I'm high. So use these as tools to at least get a baseline of where you are. I don't care if you're, uh, you know, just an everyday person who wakes up, goes to work, comes home, spends time with his family, goes to bed, doesn't lift a day out of the week. Use the BMI chart and at least get where you are today. That's going to be your baseline. Okay. So again, let's use me for an example. So I'm, I'm, I'm two columns away from being technically called obese. Um, right now I'm on the overweight, the higher overweight side of the spectrum, um, which again, is, isn't necessarily accurate because of muscle mass, but at least I have that number. So if I lose weight, obviously I'll see my BMI score start going down. So if it was, um, I believe it was 28.1 that I told you guys, according to this calculator. So maybe it'll go down to 27.2 as I lose more weight. Maybe it goes down to 25. Now, for me, the healthy range, which I don't think I will ever get to, because it's, in my opinion, I would be having to lose a lot of muscle mass. And I'm not a big guy to begin with. Um, so at 5'9", at my BMI would have to be between 18, which would be 125 pounds. I was that in high school. <laughs> Uh, and the upper end of the healthy and normal range is a BMI score of 24, which is 160 pounds. Could I get to 160 pounds? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I could. But the fact that I would have to lose muscle mass doesn't really get me excited. Um, like I said, I'm sitting right around 190 right now. I could probably get down to a comfortable 175, but again, I would have to die pretty, pretty severe. So maybe 180 is a more realistic number. But even at that, if I'm looking at this, 175 would put me at a BMI score of 26, okay? Which is almost smack dab in the middle of being in the overweight category. If I were to be around 180, 
which is absolutely doable. My BMI is 27, so it only goes up one point. And that literally puts me smack dab in the middle of the overweight category. So again, I, I want you to use the tools that you see online as just that, a tool, a way for you to get your baseline or a starting point. The same way with the calculator that I have on my website that talks to you about how many calories you should consume. Let's say it tells you that you need to consume, I don't know, uh, 2000 calories. Okay. And your goal is to lose weight. You might eat 2000 calories every day for a week and not lose any weight. So the baseline that they gave you could actually be your maintenance closest, you know, closer to your maintenance than it is to be in a caloric deficit. So what you're able to do is you already know that you are using 2000 cal uh, taking in 2000 calories, drop that down 250 calories a day. And by the end of a week, theoretically, you should be losing about half a pound. If you drop it from 2000 to 1500, which, which would be a deficit of 500 from your maintenance, you technically lose a pound a week. So use these tools to your advantage. Don't use them as an absolute, but use them to help pinpoint areas that you need to improve on and track your progress. Cause you can use these calculators every day, all day, 365 days out of the year on my website. So if every week, every two weeks, every month, you want to come back to the website and check your progress, use, use a, a tablet. I mean, I know in, in my EDC video, I talked about, I, I live with, with these types of tablets um, or notebooks rather. Just get a notebook and, and just start writing everything down. The date, the time that you did it, and what the score ended up being. The next week, the next two weeks, the next month, whatever time frame you use, do the same thing. Go back in, try and get it the same, the same type of day of the week, the same time of day. So if you're doing everything on a Sunday at 8 a.m. when you wake up, then try and be consistent. That way, at least you have some type of control that's going on. Now, obviously, you could eat a huge meal at midnight on, on Saturday, and then that would, you know, fluctuate your weight Sunday morning. But if you're, you know, consistent with your, your food intake and then things that you eat, it, it'll, it'll be pretty close. But I, I really want you to start tracking things. It's the easiest way for you to figure out if you're going in the right or the wrong direction so you can make, you know, the correct changes. But, uh, that's really all I have for this, this episode. I, I wrote an article on BMI uh, body mass index. And I thought it was important to really get a video out there to, to, to drive home the point. And, you know, I, I want you to be able to use the tools that I have on my website, because they're absolutely free. You don't have to pay for them. And it's just a way for you to, in the end, become healthier. And that's what I want you to do. So with that being said, use the tools that are available to you, use them to your advantage, use them as your baseline, use them as your control and make corrective steps to improving. And that's really all I got for today's episode. So I hope you got something out of it. If you did, drop me a like or a comment down in the uh, the sections down below. If you're listening on the podcast, you know, please feel free to subscribe. If you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe. I put videos out and podcasts out every single week. And I do this for you guys so that you guys can gain some knowledge, uh, get some information, learn from something, uh, and ultimately live a healthier lifestyle. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and an amazing rest of your week. And I hope to see you guys on the next episode.